Hello, everyone, and welcome. Through the magic of Zoom, we're able to watch people enter the virtual auditorium, where we have wonderful apple, apple cider donuts, a tradition this time of year for reunion. I uh, wish we could share with you. Actually, I'm just kidding. I'm in my office. Um, and uh, watching you enter, and we're about ready to get started. So, good morning. My name is Rick Page. I'm Dean of the Larner College of Medicine. I'm so pleased to welcome you today to Voices of the College, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the Larner College of Medicine. I'm especially glad to welcome alumni from classes spanning over half a century this weekend and to thank those of you joining us for this special session. Today you will hear from leaders in the college, but more important, you will hear the voices of our wonderful and committed students. As many of you know, academic medical systems must commit to embracing equity and inclusion if they are to realize the full benefit of a diverse workforce and serve in their missions for their community. At the Larner College of Medicine, we've gone a step further and tied our principles of professionalism to our work in diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're committed to developing a common understanding of systemic racism, sexism, and other barriers that may prevent our goals of creating an equitable working and learning environment for all, and developing a diverse pipeline of physicians and scientists to care for every member of the community. The focus that we're talking about today is not new at Larner. In fact, in 2011, the college formed the Dean's Advisory Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. And in 2012, Dr. Margaret Tando was recruited as Associate Dean to guide our efforts. Today, our Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, under Dr. Tando's oversight, is leading our efforts toward engagement among all parts of the institution and for all Larner students, faculty, and staff. It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tando, who in addition to her role as Associate Dean for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, is also the very recently invested inaugural Richard L. Gamelli, MD, 74, Green and Gold Professor of Surgery. Please welcome Dr. Tando. Thank you, Dean Page. And I too would like to welcome you all here um, this morning. And uh, this back, the fact that we're greeting you virtually, um, I am, we are all very excited to tell you about the incredible work that we're doing here. We being our students, our faculty, our staff are doing here and, uh, and the work we do to support our medical students, um, faculty and staff. Our office actually serves two main purpose within the college. Um, let me just say before I, I say that, I am privileged to be leading this office um, since 2013. Our office serves two main purposes in the, within the uh, college. We are one advisory to the Dean and other senior leadership. And we work to help our faculty, staff and students incorporate diversity, equity and equity into the systems and the culture of the college through strategic planning, professional development and educational initiative. In addition, we provide uh, financial support thanks to you for a wide variety of uh, DEI initiatives, including support of our students. Our office offers services such as an emergency food pantry, emergency funds, and a place for students to just drop in and grab a cup, a cup of coffee. Sometimes they actually use the office as a study space before COVID and hopefully after COVID too. Our staff, um, I have a great group of people that I currently work with, including uh, Mrs. Tiffany Delaney. She's the uh, director of the office, Dr. Ann Doherty, Dr. Michael Upton, Dr. Uh, Maria Avila, Dr. Eileen Chikoska Kelly, and Alex Gagnon, our office coordinator. Our work is really gu guided by an overarching goal to promote equity and inclusion throughout the college. We follow a strategic diversity plan that includes evidence-based strategies to support DEI work in, ed in education, academic support, 
faculty recruitment and retention and professionalism. We sponsor a variety of initiatives and services each year from academic enhancement programs for students to anti-bias education for faculty and staff. As you can see, uh, our slides just show a few of our signature um, events that we've uh, had. And, that, and these events, including the Martin Luther King lecture, ex, uh, reach and extends into our local communities. Many of these are, are actually made possible due, due, due to the support of you, our alumni. One of our newest programs is the Gender um, Equity Initiative, which is led by Do Dr. Ann Doherty. She is the equity, the uh, gender equity liaison for the um, office. This program is working to increase the re representation, advancement, and workplace satisfaction of women identified and other genders currently underrepresented at the Larner College of Medicine. The program develops me mentorship opportunities for women identified and non-binary faculty, staff, and students and recognizes outstanding achievement on the part of Elcom women identified in non-binary faculty, staff, and students. Another program that we have is our Elcom Mentors Program, and I would like to introduce doc, Dr. Eileen Chikaska Kelly, our Academic Excellence Liaison, who will tell us more about this program. Thank you so much. I am so delighted to be here to talk to you about our mentoring program, which is so exciting. The Larner College of Medicine mentoring program pairs our faculty and residents with students who are underrepresented in medicine. And we've developed this program because research tells us that um, mentoring is the most effective way to support students to be successful in their path towards becoming a doctor. And the reason that this happens is because our mentors commit to our students throughout the course of their education and share their knowledge and experience as the students work on goals that they independently um, identify. And it can range anywhere from making sure that the students have a competitive application for residency to I just moved to Burlington and where can I get a good cup of coffee. So um, it's a very exciting program, and we want to thank you so much for your continued support for this and for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen, um, very much for that. Um, now we would like to um, showcase the work of our medical students and some of the diversity, equity, and inclusion related organizations and initiatives that that they have been involved with and are currently involved with. First up, I would like to introduce Christopher Veal, a fourth year medical student who will be sharing about his most recent project, the Learner Stories Project. Thank you, Dr. Sando. Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Veal, and I'm here to introduce a project um, that's very near and dear to my heart, the Learner Stories Project. While some can look at this as simply a story, a storytelling project, it's much more than that to me. It's the beginning of a movement. Last year, the American Medical Association published a report that found medical students were three times more likely to commit suicide than their same aged peers. For me, this is unacceptable. And it's a clear sign that this culture needs to change. This project is here to initiate that change. It's my hope that through this project, the Lauder College of Medicine will be the first medical school to create a culture that normalizes the need for self-care and includes vulnerability as part of our commitment to professionalism. This project here is here to ensure no medical student ever feels alone and they have access to resources and solutions that work. In the following video, you will learn a bit about me and my inspiration behind developing this project. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. And now, the Lara Storage Project.
I started seeing a new therapist. We started, you know, talking. And, you know, I tried to be as open-minded as I was when I was in California. And he was able to really just ask the right questions in the right way to get me to talk about something that I really didn't want to talk about. And he introduced this notion that I continue to use to this day, which is really the basis of this entire project, which is growing comfortable with being uncomfortable. I started telling people, yeah, I fell step one, and I'm, I'm now I'm studying for it again. But I'm doing well. I'm, I'm really doing well right now. I'm, I have this great tutor. Like, I'm seeing this really great therapist. Like, my godparents are so supportive of me right now. Like, I could not be in a better position right now. You know, I got a lot of praise. I got I me mean, a surprisingly large amount of just people being really cool with that. You know, saying that, oh, you know, Chris, that's so, that's so, like, that's so awesome of you. Like, you know, my friend failed step one. I didn't know that. You know, I thought I was the only person that failed step one. So, you know, I'm getting all of this, like, positive feedback that I was not expecting at all. So, yeah, you know, I eventually took it in November and I passed it. No, granted, I didn't pass it with like stars and rainbows. I passed it though. <laughs> you know, I, I did good enough to pass. And uh, I remember being like in my room, reading that email on my phone that I passed and just having this huge weight lifted off of me. I had finally gotten this thing off of me and it wasn't the, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the exam. It was the person that I was before I took that exam was a completely different person than it was now. That was a, that was a day that changed my entire life because I could see that, okay, asking for help worked, getting in therapy worked, you know, being truthful with yourself worked. You can be happy. People out there actually do like you. People out there actually are trying to help you. You have to be open to letting them help you. And so that was the moment in which I had changed my life. In a way, I think that this project is, is how I'm giving back. But moving forward is a, is a journey in and of itself. Thank you. So much, Chris. We, um, I have to say personally, when Chris presented us with the idea of the project, I was almost overwhelmed because I, it, I think it is so needed. And we believe that the Learner Story Project is an important one to ensure that our medical students, faculty, and staff have the opportunity to learn from um, others' experiences. Next, I would like to introduce leaders from our student affinity and, uh, and leadership groups who will tell you about uh, their groups and the work they have been doing. Um, I would like to say that our Asian Pacific um, American Medical Student Association um, leaders could not be here today because of um, some scheduling difficulty. So um, first up, we'll have the Student National Medical Association with uh, Ashwin Surya Kumar. Hi there. My name is Ashwin Suryakumar, and I am a second year medical student at the Larna College of Medicine and recently appointed alumni chair for SNMA. In the past week, I've received a flurry of emails updating me on the numerous projects that we've been working on, and I wanted to spotlight a few of them. SNMA is actively par partnering with our UVM Minority Association of Pre-Medical Students, the MAPS chapter to create a mentoring program with the undergraduates in order to expose them to Lana College of Medicine, uh, especially since they are literally right next to us. Additionally, we are working on a med program. Our leader, Akua, and Niv are Schweitzer Fellows who have created a mentoring program with local organizations in order to mentor high school students that will be housed under SNMA. This project has launched and we have over 25 mentor volunteers or starting their training, and the high school, uh, high school students are excited to have them. Personally, as one of the alumni chairs, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Uh, one of my projects will be to be working with the alumni office to find and build relations with BIPOC alumni. 
We're looking forward to hosting a webinar event when we can interact with you on an individual level uh, and so that you can get to know us better. Uh, we're also partnering with the admissions committee uh, in order to recruit more black indigenous people of color students and also engage with potential prospective students. Um, on another side, we've also partnered with other affinity groups to adapt the curriculum so that it's more inclusive and reflective of the populations we'll be, we'll be serving. So I just want to take this moment to thank you for your continued support and know that the students of SNMA are still continuing to fight for changes and progress that many of you have laid the foundation for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ashwin. Next, we'll have the Latino Medical Student Association with Victor Abraham. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Abraham. I am the current president of LMSA, which is the Latino Medical Student Association. Um, our overall foundation was started in the 80s, but it came to what it is today in the early 2000s. Um, Latin, uh, Latinx students make up about the, the, the smallest percentage of all medical students. So our organization as a whole focuses on unifying all of us, um, providing a voice for the unrepresented, advocates, advocacy, volunteerism, leadership. Um, but our local organization was founded last year by ESC Beach and um, Jose Calderon. Um, so this is only our second year and you can see our board members here. Um, but what it means personally to me is I am a first generation Latin American. My mother struggled very uh, immensely to get her MD. So she paved the way for me and I'm trying to pave the way for others. And that's why this organization um, is just, it's really meaningful to me. Um, and to that, our current goals is to, you know, pave the way uh, and make the, bring others to understand what the Hispanic culture is and provide advocacy for others. Um, current projects that we have been working on. Uh, last year we had Spanish classes. We had a salsa night where we're, we brought others and taught them how to dance salsa and like participate in culture. We have Cafe con Leches, which is a way to speak the language and break barriers down. Currently, um, this is the Hispanic Heritage Month, so we have a lecture series going on with local members and doctors from abroad uh, coming up, uh, one from DR, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, we have a Zoom cooking class. We have a fourth year URM residency application panel coming up. So we have a lot of good things in store and I'm just really excited for where we are. Um, but I just want to say we are incredibly thankful for the administration, for our student body, the other uh, affinity groups, and as well uh, to you, the alumni, for everything you do for us and all the encouragement. Um, and we hope that we can be able to build more bridges and become the foundation of equity that we can build upon in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, we'll have the American Medical Women's Association uh, next with um, Alex. Jenkins. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Jenkins and I am one of the leaders of the American Medical Women's Association, also known as AMWA. Um, and I'm very happy to get to talk to you all today. Um, I think that our group has been around for a little bit longer than some of the other groups, but I think we just recently were um, invited to be a part of the affinity groups, which we're very happy about. Uh, one of the big things that we like to on um, is that although female medical students right now are actually sometimes surpassing the number of male medical students in our colleges, that doesn't mean that we still don't face discrimination and microaggressions once we step out of the classroom. And that classroom does not just mean after we finish medical school, that also includes our clinical rotation and things of the sorts. So a lot of the work that we do here as part of the AMWA chapter at UVM is working with not only our College of Medicine and other groups, uh, other affinity groups, but also with the UVM Medical Center and the Gender Equity Division, um, as well as the Burlington community to try to work and promote events so that women have a voice and have ways to access resources that they need um, to have a successful transition into the workplace in medicine. Um, some of our annual events that we have include a Girls Science and Discovery Day, where we expose seventh and eighth grade uh, girls to the science, technology, and engineering and mathematics fields, where they come into the College of Medicine and they work with our scientists and our female physicians on a lot of different projects. And they get to have an opportunity, one, to be exposed to some of these topics and also see that as a female, you can engage in STEM fields and that you can have success there, which we're very proud of. We also do a cookie swap uh, with the um, 
famous Paula Tracy uh, at UVM, where she hosts us at her house and we swap cookies, network, and we listen to a panel of empowering women who are in STEM, as well as uh, physicians at the hospital. We like to host a lot of panels, especially now during COVID times, which are made up of female physicians um, that talk about how to have success as a female physician in male-dominated specialties, how to fight microaggressions, and when people tell you that you can't be a woman and do this and this while you're in specialty, and also working with um, mentorship programs to pair female physicians with up-and-coming future female medical students. And one of my also favorite things that we're doing is working with our gender equity division um, and attending events such as Change the Story and working with the local Burlington women's soccer team, trying to support this equal pay initiative um, that maybe some of you that are still in the Burlington area have noticed that the Burlington women's soccer team has uh, promoted. So we're very lucky that we have a very supportive medical center, a very supportive community that allows us to do the work that we like to do. But most importantly, um, what we do cannot be completed without the support from our faculty and alumni. And your experiences and your expertise are things that allow us to better our experience as we move on in the future. So we greatly appreciate your continued support and fighting for gender equity, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much, uh, Alex. Um, next up, we'll have uh, Brad Blansky. Brad is going to talk to us about two groups, the um, Affinity Group, the Gender and Sexuality Alliance, and the Student Leadership Group, um, the Social Justice Coalition. Hello, <clears throat> my name is Brad Blansky. I'm a second year medical student and I'm going to talk first about the Gender and Sexuality Alliance. The GSA is a student interest group with the goal of fostering a supportive environment for LGBTQ plus students and allies. We are a chapter of the Medical Student Pride Alliance, a national group for LGBTQ plus allopathic and osteopathic student physicians that conduct research, provide mentorship, and engage in advocacy to advance the health and well-being of gender and sexual minority individuals. Some of our most recent projects at uh, Larner include the adoption and normalization of providing personal pronouns in everyday situations. This has been done by providing medical students with badges with their pronouns that they can put on their student ID cards. And it's also the norm here that students, faculty, and staff will put their personal pronouns in their email signature. Students from the class of 2022 have also collaborated with medical illustration series Osmosis to create an educational video on sexual orientation and gender identity for medical and other healthcare students. Burlington also celebrates their Pride Week in September, so we have a great way to welcome all the incoming students where we march with the University of Vermont Medical Center in downtown Burlington just to show our support. Last year was actually my very first Pride Parade, and I can't even begin to explain how impactful it was to see our dean, associate deans, residents, and physicians marching alongside us. Despite COVID preventing in-person Pride Parade this year, Zoom has allowed us to have many virtual events. For example, yesterday was the annual Vito Mbassiani and George DeSalvo LGBTQ Health Equity Lecture in which Dr. Lourdes Fallens talked about intersectionality within the LGBTQI community. It's also common for GSA students to serve on the search committee for this lecture annually. Trans um, we also had Julie Thompson, director of the Transgender uh, Health Department at Fenway Health in Boston come to speak with us. And we also discussed breakthrough in HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis, prophylaxis with Dr. Tim Leahy from UVM. By bringing in guest speakers, we are able to supplement our curriculum with additional education and perspectives regarding LGBTQ plus health and give our students physicians a solid foundations for working with this population. Um, I'm also going to talk about the Social Justice Coalition, which is our student leadership group uh, that sort of, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> the Social Justice Coalition started in 2015 as a way of organizing students on the White Coats for Black Lives movement and has grown exponentially since then. This year, we were granted the status of student leadership group as a way to help better serve the learner community. Our goal is to promote the practice and teaching of social medicine, the definition here on the slide I pulled from UCSF. In regards to the practice of social medicine, our group works to organize meetings with, it, with the affinity groups presented before to, uh, and to create an intersectional community where students can find support both in regards to medical education and life outside of school. We also have quarterly meetings with Dean Page, Dean Tando, and, other, and others where we help collaborate to ensure the academic success of underrepresented students. 
Other projects include our book club and voter registration drive in collaboration with UVM MC and other health professions programs. We also work with faculty to implement curricular changes that help prepare student physicians to better serve patients from diverse backgrounds. The social medicine theme of the week gives students a broader scope of how diseases they learn about in their preclinical years impact patients outside of the clinic. This summer, we had a group of students help to restructure the first year professionalism, communication, and reflection course through topics such as understanding implicit bias, discussing the impact of food and housing insecurity on patients, and role-playing scenarios on how to educate for patients and colleagues in the clinical setting. Our current clinical level students are also working with course directors to implement social determinants of health in the, into their daily rounds. Even though we are a young organization, we are excited to continue working with administration, faculty, staff, and alumni to advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Larner College of Medicine, as well as the medical community as a whole. Thank you for your time and your continued support. Thank you very much, Brad. And as you can see, I mean, our students are doing incredible things. I can say that um, six, seven years ago when I started in this job, we had maybe one of these student groups and look at where we are now. And our students continue to push and uh, challenge us. And I think it, it, it makes the college a better place, a more inclusive place. Also, um, what helps in this is all the support that we've been getting from our alumni as we continue to uh, grow and thrive. And um, just the incredible leadership and support from um, our dean, I cannot um, even um, stress how important that's been, especially in this area of diversity, equity, inclusion here at the college. So I want to thank, thank you all for, uh, for uh, joining us uh, today and um, helping us as we um, train our future physicians to be better prepared to take care of all patients and any patients that actually come through their uh, doors. So um, at this point, uh, we do have time. And uh, I think the question and answer um, function is enabled. Um, and we will be open to take questions. Except I, I can't see the question. <laughs> If I can just chime in, um, I'm not sure if everyone can see me or hear me. Am I, am I being, my PS see me and hear me? Yeah, um, perfect, thank you. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I think I got a few questions about how to support the Lauren Stories Project, which thank you very much, I, I appreciate it. Um, there, there should be a link in the, um, the Q&A box. Uh, I apologize, I'm using my phone right now, so I can't look at both at the same time. But um, through that link, you can actually donate um, to the project. Um, interestingly enough, the project is quite expensive to produce uh, because the videos uh, um, are, are, are made with, with, with um, a lot of uh, uh, strength and, uh, and precision. So um, we are actively seeking um, funds for the project. Um, we are, our goal is to get 10 videos uh, done this year and hopefully 10 videos every year or more. Um, but if you're interested in donating to, donating to the project, you can follow that link. I believe that, that link is also on the um, ODEI page as well. And I'll follow that up because I'm going to post my email again. I'm working with Chris on this project. And um, because we're also seeking stories from alumni, um, if you are interested in submitting a story of your own, I will share with you my email and you can um, shoot me an email with uh, what your story idea is. So there's a question, um, how do the groups reach out to others such as staff in the community? I'm gonna let the students answer, answer that. I can I can start if, if that will help. Um, so the way I have reached out so far is pretty direct. 
Um, there are current some clinics that offer translation services. And um, before I started here, I used to be a medical Spanish translator. So I've been working with them to see their needs. Um, uh, I think Ashton brought up Schweitzer Fellow. I am also a Schweitzer Fellow, so I'm working with local libraries and whatnot to increase diversity and um, ideas of diversity and speak to kids about that. Um, for staff members, it's it's been always very helpful, but it, it is always like a very direct way. And um, it, but they've always been responding very positively. Um, I don't think I've had someone ever tell me no. They're like, oh yeah, how can I help? And it's that's how we've been doing it so far for LMSA, and it's been very helpful. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, I would like to ask um, Chris, put Chris on the spot again and ask him about um, the um, medical students collaboration with, with the um, undergrad. Um, and specifically, I, I think some people don't know this, but Chris as an undergrad came, approached our office of diversity, equity, inclusion as an undergrad and wanted to start a minority association of pre-med students at the University of Vermont. We were, we were glad to support and we, we got him, we um, got, we encouraged him and got him right started. And I can tell you, even when we had our LCME um, visit in 2012, and they asked, they asked us if we had an SNMA chapter and we said no, but we had a MAPS chapter and the surveyor was so excited and we talked about the program. But I'm going to add, let Chris just tell you the connection between the MAPS and the SNMA chapter here. Yeah, uh, thank you for putting me on the spot again, Dr. Tando. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that because um, you guys know I love to hear myself talk. So, um, <laughs> yeah, basically with, with MAPS, um, you know, we... Um, when we started back in 2013, uh, it was really, um, for me, a, a, a way of just trying to get more of us, one, seen by the College of Medicine, but two, just see more of each other um, in the undergraduate um, capacity. I, when, I was in my, when I was a senior in my undergraduate class, I believe I was the only Black male pre-med student in my entire 3,000 person class. Um, so as you can imagine, that felt a little bit isolating, um, which kind of inspired me to at least try to get something like um, MAPS started. Um, I, I'm, I'm incredibly happy that I had support of, um, of ODEI, especially in its very early years of a, a, as an office, um, which allowed um, really the entire uh, club to take off. But that unique partnership um, and that affiliation with the College of Medicine was huge, um, not only for us undergraduates, in order for us to kind of understand, you know, what we need to do and, and, and kind of the, the, the types of things that we need to, 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 to participate in in order to be competitive in medical school, but that also more or less created a pipeline for us um, to the College of Madison. And I believe that there has been at least one person uh, in every class since then that is, uh, from, from MAPS that is now at the College of Madison. So um, the, 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 the ability for the College of Madison to work very, uh, for the student groups at, at College of Madison, um, to work hand in hand with the undergraduate program from the SMA MAPS perspective, which is the only one I can speak for, um, um, towards, um, is an incredibly unique one, which I, I really am happy that we've been able to sustain. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, I can probably talk a little bit about the, um, the GSA in regards to undergraduate uh, support. So we uh, we work closely with OSTEM, which is out in STEM with the undergraduate um, uh, college to sort of uh, encourage uh, LGBTQ people to go into STEM fields and feel supported and welcomed in these fields. Um, also, there was a uh, national event that um, I was a part of in which we work directly with LGBTQ plus medical uh, pre-medical students to kind of talk them through the process of applying to medical school and the challenges of whether or not to be out or not and you know disclosing your status as an LGBTQ person and kind of just providing that mentorship to undergraduate students and help them encourage them to join the medical school profession and feel more welcomed in what you know could be um, kind of a scary environment. I can also touch on a little bit about what AMWA does um, in connecting with the undergrad. Um, I was a previous uh, UVM um, 
uh, varsity soccer alumni. And the athletics department does a lot of great work um, with promoting um, gender equity as well. And one of the reasons I brought up the Burlington uh, girls soccer team is because the one of the conferences that we recently attended as part of AMWA was working with not only women at the College of Medicine, women in the UVM Medical Center, but also uh, female business owners, uh, people from Burton um, and all over the state of Vermont came together and talked about the pay gap uh, between women and men in the same jobs. And a lot of our work um, is tied with our community and working to allow students such as the Burlington high school soccer players learn that we um, in colleges and universities and colleges of medicine are fighting uh, for these things and that they're also supporting us as um, high school students and then even as young as seventh and eighth graders that we talk about. So a lot of our work does reach out into the community, um, not just the undergraduate campus, which I think is very important because the more that we can collaborate with this wonderful community that we surround ourselves with, I think the more that we can have lasting impacting change. Uh, to round that out, I'll also add uh, LMSA is currently building an LMSA plus division, which is for the undergrads. Um, my my little sister is, a, is an undergrad at NYU and she just finished making one at her school. So I've been talking to her a lot to see how I can go about encouraging a creation of one. And basically what it's for, it creates pipelines for students to apply to medical schools around the country. And it also helps them get scholarships for application. Um, a lot of uh, URM students, especially Hispanics, come from um, from low income communities. So it really encourages them teaches them how to apply, where to apply, and connects them with uh, doctors and admissions boards to really hone in and um, be effective with the finances given to them and the scholarships given to them. Well, thank you very much to everyone. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions, so I do have one more thing, well, if you don't okay. mind. Me yeah, going. go ahead, Alex. Um, a lot of our students um, really, really love hearing from alumni and love connecting with alumni. So we will be hopefully releasing our contact information for alumni, but we, a lot of our ideas and the things that we do stem from the ideas of others. So we appreciate outflowing support and also really are open to any ideas that people have on how we can expand our affinity groups um, expand the work that we do in our local community and also maybe in the communities in which our alumni are involved in. So if you have any ideas about that, we would love to hear from you. So we look forward to working with you guys and thank you for being here. If I can also say one more thing, um, I kind of like going with what um, I just said, you know, with the Lawrence Rice Project, we are trying to hear voices from medical students, current and former um, uh, alumni uh, and faculty. If you um, have a story that uh, you want to tell um, about a particular struggle that you had during medical school, um, you know, we would love to hear that. Uh, that's, that's a story that we really want to um, promote because you, our alumni, um, are our inspiration to keep going. So um, if you could, uh, you know, if you want more information on how you can get involved, um, feel free to reach out to Eileen who put her email in the, in the chat. And um, I'm excited to, to, to get to know you guys more. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. And again, um, thank you to everyone for um, being here uh, today. Um, we will send follow-up emails with more information and contact information on how to get involved to our alumni. Um, stay safe, everyone, and uh, have a wonderful day.